Hello collectors, Joe Prodzik here with another statue review. It wasn't too long ago that I didn't consider myself a Spider-Man fan. I didn't read his comics and I didn't stand in line to watch his movies. Then something changed. I started hearing about this new superior Spider-Man storyline and decided to check it out. The story involves longtime Spider-Man nemesis, Dr. Octopus, taking over Peter Parker's mind and body. As the story progresses, Otto Octavius discovers a lot of things he didn't know about Peter Parker and what it takes for him to actually be Spider-Man, gaining a level of respect for him in the process. As did Otto, I too gained a new respect for Peter Parker and Spider-Man as a superhero. Spider-Man is currently the only Marvel title I read consistently, and I have discovered a love of the character. This is the Amazing Spider-Man Premium Format Figure from Sideshow Collectibles. Beginning in 1963, The Amazing Spider-Man from Marvel Comics was continuously published for almost 50 years until the series ended with issue number 700 in 2012, so the comic has since been relaunched, and truth be told, the story of Peter Parker never really ended with that issue. The comics tell the story of Peter Parker, a high school student who was given special abilities after being bitten by a radioactive spider. Peter later puts on a costume and becomes the hero known as Spider-Man. I'm sure you all know the story of the web-slinging, wise-cracking superhero. Uncle Ben, Gwen Stacy, Aunt May, Mary Jane, and a host of iconic villains have graced the pages of Marvel's flagship comic book series. In addition to his comic book series, Spider-Man can also be seen in an animated series on Disney XD and will be making an appearance in the upcoming Captain America Civil War film. First things first, let's talk about this art box. Some people may think that art boxes don't really matter, as they just end up in the garage, but I disagree with that. The unboxing experience is one of the best parts of statue collecting. It's the payoff for months of waiting and hundreds of hard-earned dollars spent. Sideshow has produced a lot of creative and outstanding art boxes in the past, but this one may be my favorite. I don't want to put it away. In addition to an image of the statue, the box is wrapped up in pictures from the Spider-Man comics. It just gives me a great feeling of nostalgia, even though I just recently started going back and reading those very first issues of the comics. Great job, Sideshow. Peter Parker as Spider-Man is one of the most well-known superheroes there is, and so there have been a lot of statues made of this character. Not quite as many as Batman lately, in the case of Sideshow specifically, I think they have done more Spider-Man statues in the past than they have of Batman. In fact, a few of those classic Spider-Man statues from Sideshow have become highly collectible and are worth three or four times their original price. So this Spider-Man statue has a lot to live up to. Right off the bat, the first thing I notice is how dynamic this statue is. Spider-Man is in the midst of battle against an iconic villain, the Green Goblin, and is using the athleticism that he is known for to escape the goblin bombs that are erupting from underneath. I really like the pose, as it has some motion and looks good from a variety of different angles. Though the statue won't be displayed from the rear, you can really get a sense of that motion in the statue from that angle. This exclusive version of the wall crawler comes with two portraits a standard portrait, and a take-aim expression. Take-aim expression can be combined with two different hands. The exclusive hand comes with web and the regular without. I think the ideal combination for me is going to be the standard portrait with the exclusive hand. Not a must-have exclusive option, but the extra head adds a little bit more personality to the statue. Spider-Man's base is where the opinions of collectors seem to be differing with some saying that the goblin bomb explosions look more like a lava eruption than an explosion. When my daughter saw the statue for the first time, that is the first thing that she thought too. While I don't disagree with that, I think the design of the explosion gives the statue a more comic book feel rather than a realistic one, and I think it will closely match the smoke on the upcoming Green Goblin statue from Sideshow. The overall sculpt of Spider-Man is great, He's muscular without being too big and his legs are dangling in the air, showing off his flexibility. 
This seems to be a more mature version of Spider-Man, which, as someone who's only recently started reading Spider-Man, is a plus for me. Now why do I think that? Well, I think a younger Spidey is more lanky and awkward, and this statue doesn't have that feel to it. I imagine this guy spends his time running Parker Industries rather than attending high school. Having previously owned the J. Scott Campbell Spider-Man statue, I wasn't expecting great things from the paint on this statue. While I do think the paint work is a step above that statue as it has great shading, some excellent highlights, and varying tones, the line work on the costume is much the same as it was with the JSC piece. It's mostly fine, but there are some easy to spot places where the painters got a little sloppy with the lines. Can you see this from a normal viewing distance? No. But as I like to say, it is the finer details that separates a good statue from a great statue. The overall quality of Spider-Man is really nice, and though he seems sturdy, this is a statue you are going to want to take apart when moving around. Though the contact point between his hand and the base is reinforced, I still don't think it would take much to at least crack the arm if things go awry during the move. Speaking of that contact point, a lot of people are wondering if this statue is going to have leaning issues. The statue is said to have been reinforced with metal rods, and if that is the case, we shouldn't have any leaning issues at all. The overall balance of the statue seems good, and the statue doesn't feel like it's going to easily tip over, but the design overall does mean it could more easily fall in the direction of Spidey's lean angle if someone were to crash into your display. The Amazing Spider-Man Premium Format figure is priced at $469.99 and has an edition size of $2,500. The regular version is similarly priced and has an edition size of $5,000. That's 7,500 total statues, so collectability of this guy is going to be low. Don't expect him to shoot up in value anytime soon, if ever. While this means that there won't be many collectors who miss out on this statue, if any, it does mean that collectors who desire a more limited piece won't find it here. So while many people will think this is the best Spider-Man statue ever made, it still isn't going to be held in the same regard as the classics due to the large edition size. At $469, I think Spidey is fairly priced, and Sideshow is giving us a lot of statue here. So is the Amazing Spider-Man truly amazing? I think this statue has the potential to be one of my favorites right alongside the Batman Premium format. In fact, Spider-Man is already the favorite Marvel statue in my collection because of the classic look and dynamic pose. But like Batman, am I going to stop short of calling him the best statue in my collection? That's probably true. So while there are some imperfections in the paint and the collectability of the statue is low, that shouldn't stop you from adding the Amazing Spider-Man to your collection and it's not going to stop me from calling him one of my favorites. So while in my heart I want to give this statue an amazing score, the statue just falls a bit short but is still great with a final review score of 4 out of 5. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Amazing Spider-Man Premium Format figure from Sideshow Collectibles. And if you did, check out my new show called Statue Talk, where I share my thoughts on all of the latest statue previews, pre-orders, and updates to my collection. Check out my website, statuereview.com, where you can check out the full gallery of this statue, as well as my written review. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date on all of my latest statue reviews. This has been Joe Prodzik for Statue Review. Thanks for watching.